Uh, hi, uh, in this video we will talk about the rules of road. So these uh, things can be helpful during your exam. So I will just try to make uh, make it simple. Uh, the first one is priority road. So what, what, what are the things that you need to keep in mind while driving on a priority road? So let's uh, talk about three important things and then first is speed. So whenever you are entering a pri priority road, always try to take up to the speed. So if there is a, if you are entering a priority road of say let's say 50 km per hour road, then whenever you enter a priority, enter a priority road, try to keep your speed either 50 or, or, or something below like around 45 to 50, but not less than that because uh, in a priority road, you have the priority. So you don't have to worry about uh, the other, uh, the right hand rule or the exit rule and so on. So always whenever you are uh, entering a priority road, try to, try to keep up the speed. Uh, and then and then the second part, it's it's continuation of the first part. So whenever uh, you're on a priority road, you know that you have the priority. So you can go at the speed uh, that is mentioned in the priority road and the connecting roads, you should not worry about the connecting roads because the connecting roads, they have to give way. So they will give way. So you have the priority, you can uh, go at your speed. Uh, one most important thing on a priority road is the unsupervised pedestrian crossings. So, uh, so in, in on priority roads, you can come across a pedestrian crossing, uh, crossing that is not uh, guarded. So, in that case, uh, the the pedestrians have priority. So, even if you are at a speed, you should remember that if there is a crossing coming ahead, which is which doesn't have a signal and all, then it is you who have to give way. So, those things you need to be so so do so prepare well in advance. So, try to look far ahead and see if there is a pedestrian crossing ahead, and then plan your uh, driving accordingly. Uh, I can touch another aspect while uh, talking about this. So, eco driving is something very, uh, very nice feature, uh, very nice to do uh, while you are driving, uh, while you are doing your driving exam. And in general, it it saves a lot of uh, petrol and uh, in in turn a lot of money. When I talk about eco driving, the things that you need to do is uh, try to avoid unnecessary brake. For eco driving, you need to look far ahead. Uh, so, if if there is a uh, if there is a signal traffic signal coming ahead and you see that there is already green for it's already green for a long time then definitely it will change, turn to red so in that case you don't have to go at the highest speed you can reduce your speed and then slow down so that by the time you reach the signal uh, probably it will turn to um, um, green you can plan your driving so planning is very important uh, uh, for eco driving so if you can plan well then you can do the eco driving so eco driving you can do uh, while entering a, wherever you have to give way while entering a, let's say while entering a roundabout and then wherever you have to stop when you have to stop at the red signal next uh, next up we'll talk about highway so on a highway the most important things that you need to keep in mind the the first one is uh, in the acceleration line acceleration lane that joins the highway you should try to catch up to the speed so if the highway is let's say 90 km per hour then when you enter the acceleration lane uh, you should uh, try to accelerate as fast as possible to 90 km per hour and then join the highway at that speed so if you can join the highway at 90 km per hour on a 90 km per hour then it's a very good thing but of course there will be exceptions if the road is not very busy and if there is a traffic then of course you should not join at 90. so based on the situations if it's an ideal situation then it's it's a good idea to accelerate to 90 and then join the speed at uh, the highway at 90. and once you join the highway the second most important thing is distance from the front car so uh, let's say you have joined the highway uh, at 90 and then but then you see that the front car uh, is very close to you so in that case it's a good idea to slow down a bit until you keep that uh, that minimum distance uh, and then once the distance is maintained then you can uh, keep up your speed so if it's a 90 km per hour road then it's a good idea to keep uh, your speed to 90 but if there is a uh, uh, to to keep your distance uh, to to like 90 minimum 90 meters uh, so that uh, so that you keep the distance uh, from the front current it's a good point third most important thing um, uh, in the in the highway is is the deceleration lane so whenever you are exiting a highway, always try to exit at the same speed as as in the highway. So if it's a, if let's say you are exiting a highway a hundred kilometer per, per hour road, so whenever you before until you don't join the deceleration lane, you should your speed should be around hundred kilometer per hour. And when once you enter the deceleration lane, then only you can you should decelerate, not not on the highway. So on the highway, you should always keep up the speed. So it is very important. So try to do that during the exam. We will talk about the country road. So on the country road, what is what are the things that you need to keep in mind? Uh, 
uh, first is speed so on a country road if you if the speed is uh, let's say 70 km per hour then you you should try to keep 70 km per hour or or around 65 to 70 on that road you are not supposed to drive slow on a country road uh, so so you sh and and if you drive slow it will be an unnecessary obstruction to the uh, to the people coming behind and then you may be failed during the exam so try to keep up speed around 65 to 70 if if it's an ideal scenario uh, let's say if there are no traffic and all but if there is traffic then you you should adapt your speed accordingly next up on country road is positioning so it's very important to position position your car correctly on a country road uh, you should keep your uh, car uh, um, towards the a bit towards the not not to the center but a, t a bit towards the right when you are driving on a country road uh, hope, uh, on a daytime but uh, during night time it's it's a good idea to come closer to the center road but mostly whenever you are uh, gi giving your exam it will be daytime so on a country road just try to keep your car a bit uh, away from the center lane and towards the corner uh, but not at the extreme corner try to keep a bit uh, uh, let's say uh, center of your lane not the center line but center of your lane or your part of the lane very important uh, the left turn on a country road is is very very crucial and you need to practice that several times before you uh, give your exam because um, in general, the country roads um, uh, are, have a high speed, and then there will be a be um, the, an opposite lane that you need to cross before turning, and uh, then you 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 should not uh, stop. At least, if there is no ideal scenario, or if there is an ideal scenario, you should not you should not your wheels should not be logged. So you can crawl, but you should not stop. So before taking a left turn, it's important to. Uh, slow down beforehand and then uh, uh, press your brake pedal a few times before so that the person behind you knows that you are planning a left turn ahead and then you need to indicate uh, beforehand that you will be taking left uh, in the upcoming uh, left lane uh, left turn and then you should position your car accordingly so um, positioning is very important while driving so if you are planning to take a left turn then it's important to uh, take your car, uh, car a bit towards the center lane and then um, uh, you should try to take the left turn without uh, stopping the car you can slow down if needed but you should not stop the car and you should not cause unnecessary obstruction to the pe people coming uh, behind you and the people coming in front of you so it's very important to have a have, have do a good planning before doing a left turn and uh, and if you practice several times then it will be easier for you during the exam okay now we will talk about the residential roads and what you need to keep in mind uh, while driving on a residential road so first thing is, um, so residential roads are basically the roads where you uh, where the speed limit is like 30 km per hour. So on a residential road, always uh, try to keep the speed uh, as low as possible uh, to the speed limit. So um, let's say if it's a 30 km per road, so even if you cross one kilometer, maybe you you might be uh, like you might be failed during the exam because. Residential road is a road. The expectation is there will be people all around. So if you if you drive at a higher speed, then it's a risk that people will be harmed. So that's why uh, if it's a 30 kilometer road, then always try to uh, make your max speed limit as 25. So try to keep your speed not more than 25 kilometer per hour. Uh, and on residential roads, the second rule is you should be aware of the right hand rule. So they will be taking you to the residential road to check this right hand rule and the exit rules. So it's a good idea to. Uh, uh, if if the, if to make it clear to the examiner if needed then you can if there is no one while you are driving if there is no one in the coming from the right hand side then you can mention that uh, like uh, that since there is no one coming from the right hand side I don't have to wait I can go forward so these things uh, can help you uh, to make the examiner realize that you know about the rules and so on so so on on a on a residential road uh, make sure you are following the right hand rule and the and the exit rule. 